Okay guys, we're now at the all important point of the video where we actually want to test the block and start talking about some actual numbers. Now what you see in front of you is quite messy, but um, I need to explain what I'm using, why I'm using it, and how I'm going to test uh, before you make any judgments, so bear with me. Now, the first question is, how would I assemble the loop and what other components would I use in there? Now, I've decided to do a, a GPU only loop, um, and my reason for that is just looking down the line, if I have any more opportunities to test any more blocks, I want to make sure that the, the data I record today is relevant and I can compare to that in the future. I can't say what CPU, what motherboard, what, you know, anything is going to change in the future, so to do a GPU only loop now just makes more sense because I, I'm going to have the same pump same reservoir, same radiator and same fans, that's a certainty. So that's my reason for doing a GPU only and on the same sort of point, obviously I haven't got anything for comparison sake in terms of other water blocks, but I do have the reference coolers, temperatures and idle and load. So that's what I'm going to be comparing to. So in terms of what I'm using, I've obviously got the alpha cool block um, I have an XS PC D5 pump uh, which has the AK top on there. XS PC AX 360mm rad, three Phobia fans. Uh, I have an Alpha Cool reservoir. Now, the tubing and the fittings were not my first choice, but due to various complications, uh, I've had to make use with what I've got to hand spare parts, which is some rib rigid tubing and some Primo chill fittings. Um, now off cam, when I get to the written portion of the video, I will retest everything in a, a range of different configurations, uh, pump settings, fan settings, different tube and tube and length. Um, I'd imagine the, the difference between what you see in front of you and the, and the numbers I talk about and anything that I change down the line, it's only going to skew the result a degree or two either way. It's not going to have a massive impact, but I will test that. So in terms of how I'll test, I'm going to overlay the GPU-Z readout, which is going to give us the core temperatures throughout the tests that are run. I'm obviously going to have to cut them up into little small sections. Um, I know you guys don't want to watch the tests in their entirety, but the video is becoming quite long. Uh, the last thing I need to mention is what you see here, which is my gelid fan controller. Now, what I'm doing with that is not the most scientific or ideal test, but... Uh, I'm making use of what I've got to hand because this controller has thermal probes and what I've done is I've fitted one to the memory area I've got one as close to the core as possible and then I've got one on the left side of the card and I want to try and keep an eye on the temperatures uh, across the card and not just focus on the actual core because that's one of the main features of the card is that it should cool some of the other hot parts of the GPU. So for that, I have my fan controller hooked up and if I just unlock it now, um, I'm in the ambient uh, room temperature right now of about 17 to 18 degrees. And if I start with this number four, which goes to here, that is giving me my memory temperatures, which is 29 degrees. Uh, my core temperature, it's not going to be 100%, it's, it's as close as I can get it, but it is 25. As I'm going to overlay a GPU Z here, and you can keep an eye on the temperatures. I will have some text on the left side, or I might talk through about what I'm doing at any given point. But I'm just going to start with Fermark stress test. I'm going to do the standard 1080p test. Okay, I've had Fermark running now for a considerable amount of time, and I want to talk about the temperatures that were recorded in the software, and then some of the results that I've picked up from the fan controller as well. So the peak temperature of the test was about 46 C. Now that is quite an achievement in itself considering the the numbers that were recorded with the stock cooler. Now focusing in on some of the other parts of the GPU now. If I just unlock the controller and have a look because the test is still running. So we've got 39 degrees for the memory, which again, absolutely fantastic. So there is definitely clear evidence that the memory is being cooled. So I've now switched over to the extreme settings. Everything as high as I can get it. 
and we'll now be looking for the temperature change. Now at this point I will just say that the D5 pump is on its lowest setting. The fans, I've got them locked down to 1200 RPM. So in terms of noise, it's absolutely fantastic at this point. So 46 is pretty much the peak in that test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop 3D Mark. Um, I'm going to use the Fire Strike Extreme preset and get a bit of a judgment of how hot things get across the, co the cars. You know, not just the core temperature, but I do want to look at other parts of the card using the fan controller as well. Peak temperatures, nowhere near the fur mark temperatures. Uh, test's now finished and it's sitting at 29 degrees C. Right then guys, in terms of conclusion, I think the numbers have spoken for themselves at this point. Highest temperature across any test that I threw at the card under extreme settings. Um, I think the highest number I saw was about 47 degrees C. Now, that is going to be difficult to translate in terms of what to expect from a card and a GPU um, for your particular model. There's just no way I can know that at this point. All I can do is compare what I had to what I've got now. Um, we we'll start with the obvious. The card under testing is not the most extreme card on the market, far from it. It's actually a pretty low end card and you wouldn't expect the temperatures to be that high anyway. However, you know, the temperatures when it was air cooled, just so much higher than what we've seen today. Um, and just come back to where I started early in this video. It's a low end card, it suits my needs and I don't have any intentions of picking anything up more powerful just yet. Now that's going to leave the guys who are running 970s, 980s, 290s scratching their head and thinking is this worth it for me. And I can't be sure at this point but you know based on what I've seen I do have very strong hopes for the other models. I have to base my award on this card only comparing it to numbers that I saw while it was air cool to what I'm seeing now and I'm absolutely blown away with the performance difference. Absolutely fantastic numbers. So let's just come back to that point again. I mentioned it way, way back. Uh, you know, why would you cool a lower or a mid-range card? Well, it's the upgrade path, isn't it? It's, it's the fact that I can take the bulk of what I've got now and I can transfer that over to my new graphics card if I wish to upgrade. And I can do it at a fraction of the price. So as I said earlier, you know, the, the testing I've done today, it's not the most advanced or scientific approach, but I have to make use of what I've got here. And this is the same sort of setup that I can replicate again with future cards, which I hope and I can look at some, some other cards uh, and blocks in the future. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to upgrade my GPU because there are no other brands going to make a block for this card. So, you know, in that sense, it, it might seem a bit trivial and almost pointless that I've done this. But and I know there are some guys out there with low-end cards that have been sat wanting to want a cool um, and they might have been a little bit sceptical about is it worth it and you know different factors and the numbers really speak for themselves so I'd like to thank Alpha Cool for providing me the sample so I could put this review together for you guys and I'm hoping it's been a little bit of use to some of the guys that have been sort of sat on the fence wondering should I go for this block or not well based on the numbers alone it's a, it's a definite from me i'm very very pleased with it it's definitely right up there as a gold award winning product now there's going to be so much more that i want to talk about but the video has just gone that little bit too long now so do check the link for the upcoming written review it might even be there by the time the 